Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to be looking at the power of lighting. Here is a standard map that I have already generated and as you can see it's looking pretty good. However, when I turn on the lights that I have already included, it takes on a very different tone. That's the power of adding lighting into your Dungeon Fog maps and this tutorial will show you how we do this. This is what your map might look like once you have finished doing the design and layout. When we add in lighting there are a few things that we have to set up first before we can continue. We need to ensure that our lighting parameters as set by the lighting tab in the bottom right hand side of your Dungeon Fog screen is working for us, not against us. The reason why I say this is because the stage and room ambient light levels default to 100%. What this means is that any light you add to the scene will be competing with this 100% ambient light setting. The first thing we need to do is reduce the light amount. Notice that the stage light is separate from the room light and as I decrease the values of each they independently darken. It is recommended that if you are going to use any kind of lighting in your scene that you start your stage and room at at least 70% or less. Obviously the more you decrease it the darker the room gets and one can simulate very dark rooms or fairly well lit rooms but not completely lit rooms. For this tutorial I'm going to set my ambient level at 55% for both. This allows us to see dramatic lighting effects as well as to work on what we need to do. Once we have set our ambient light levels it's now time to start adding lights. There are various ways that you can do this. Generally speaking you would use a prop. I'm going to deselect the lighting tab and select the prop tab. Now Dungeon Fog comes with preset lights in the form of small fires, candles, torches, various different light sources. When we talk about lighting within a particular scene we talk about two different types of lighting. We talk about practical lighting and we talk about atmospheric lighting. Practical lighting is any light source within a scene that casts light. So for example if a fire was burning on the head of this statue as I left click it it will now create illumination around the fire. Because we can see the fire we understand that the light is coming from the fire. If there were a fire burning and there was no light being cast that would be unusual. However, we might not necessarily want this flame to be burning on the head of our statue here. We want the statue to be illuminated in an airy colour. I generally work with the flame prop from Dungeon Fog within the assets but you can choose any prop you like. The reason for this is that even if a prop is not normally illuminated you can illuminate it manually. I'm going to place down some grass here to show as an example. The important thing is once we are done placing a light, the first light source, mind you, not all of the light sources and I'll explain why in a little bit, we now select that light source and now we select the lighting tab once again. Notice all of our parameters have started to show up for this particular light. Firstly we can see our ambient light but now we can also see the particular information around this light source, this flame. Firstly it is a light receiver, it is flat at the moment. We could change that so that it doesn't cast shadows, so that it isn't going to receive any shadows at all or that it isn't going to receive shadows from props. Those are the various options available to you here. We're also going to see that we can make it cast a shadow or not. We don't want it to cast a shadow, it is a light source. Now we enable it as a light source if it is not a light source. If it is something that is a standard prop, for example this grass, I would enable it in order to cast light from it. Now we're going to talk about why it's casting such a brilliant amount of light in a little bit. Let's turn this off for now. We'll come back to our flame. Now our flame has got standard values that we will recognize from across Dungeon Fog. The color of the light, the intensity or saturation of that light and then how brightly that light shines. So as I increase the saturation of the light notice it gets warmer. That certainly feels a lot more like a flame to me than the colder white light that it was earlier. We can cycle through the color bars as we so choose creating eerie purple lights, pink lights and green lights, all kinds of different hues as we need for our scene. 
Finally, when we look at the luminance value of the light, it is slightly dimmer now as we decrease the luminance value. Very weak light or very bright if we increase it back up to 100%. Finally, there's the range option. Now, the range option determines how many squares from the light source are illuminated or touched by the light source itself. So at the moment, it's set to three squares. If I decrease this down to 1.3 squares, it's going to illuminate basically the squares around it and then slightly into the surrounding squares. If I deselect it, you'll see there we have a nice little pool of light. So we can control the effect quite dramatically. Now, if we wanted this to be a practical light, we would leave the flame so that everyone can see what is casting this flame. If, however, we just want this to be atmospheric, we want it to set the mood of the dungeon, let's say we want it to be a little bit redder, make it more threatening perhaps, but we don't want to see the light, we simply scroll through the properties of the light by selecting the light, of course, and if we scroll all the way down, we get to the transparency of that flame, and now we reduce the transparency down to zero, and now we have just an illuminated object with this weird red colour. Going back to adding in light to specific props, if I select this bush once again and I say enable light source, it now illuminates as this brilliant light source. But note what it's doing to our red light. It's washing it out. It's reducing the efficacy of that red light. So when you are placing lights within your scene, it becomes important for you to understand how far each light is going to be casting its illumination and what the interaction might be like with other lights. So if we change the value of the light that this bush is presenting and we increase the saturation of that color to 100% and then make it blue, the blue light is going to overpower the red light coming from our little prop here. We can't even see it unless I move that light source far away. And then we're starting to see some effect on the uh, tiles where the blue light is not simply washing out the red. To, of course, mitigate that, either we reduce down the luminance value of that light, so we make it a little bit darker. Now we can start to see that red coming through, or we leave it at 100% if we want that pure aquamarine blue happening, and we reduce the range of that light so that it's only shining in its immediate area. So by controlling the amount of light that each source is emitting, we can control the effect within our dungeon. Now, of course, with that prop selected, I can scroll down and make it invisible. So if you are simply placing down lighting for ambience, for mood, for tone, you don't need to see the prop, and it doesn't matter what prop you're using to create your illumination. Now, there are some props that are already illuminated within Dungeon Fog, and I will bring up the uh, Dragon Flame, which is quite spectacular in terms of how it operates. We've got several different types of dragon flame. My favorite one is this flame wall. Now notice what happens when I place the flame wall. Again, it's got a built-in value. If I select that now and I can see with my lighting tab open, I can see the values that were pre-built into this prop when it was added to the Dungeon Fog catalog. I can increase the intensity, I can decrease the luminance, or I can increase or change the range as I need to depending on what I want to do within my scene. Now, by demonstration of how powerful the stage and room ambience are, we're currently at 55%. If I increase the room ambience to 100%, it completely denudes the power of the lighting that we've put in place. We can still see some effect, but it doesn't have the same kind of feeling, at least certainly not in my opinion. Whereas if we take it all the way down to even lower values, it becomes incredibly atmospheric, but it might be too difficult for your players to see the detailing on the map. So you've got to find a balance somewhere where you can get the feeling of this darkened chamber without losing the details that you have put in. When it comes to casting shadows, each prop within Dungeon Fog can cast shadows, and that is part of the lighting system. So if I select this statue, uh, we'll notice with the lighting tab open that the statue is currently not casting a shadow, and it is flat. Now, um, at the moment, I've actually misselected. I've selected the light above the statue, but because it is completely transparent, I can't see that. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key to select the statue underneath. Hopefully that's the statue underneath. And yes, it is the armored statue. So when we look at the armored statue, now we don't have any of the lighting solutions that we normally have under the lighting tab. We simply have whether it is a light receiver or a light source. Well, it is a light receiver, so we're going to turn on cast shadows. Now, at the moment, 
we're not going to see a dramatic change because we have a light source directly above it which would mitigate any shadows that are around it. So I'm going to select the light above it by clicking away and then simply clicking in that space. I know that I've got the red light there. So I'm going to move this, let's say, over here. And now you can see that the shadow from that statue is being cast. It's important that your light sources are in a position where they would actually cast a light because when they're directly above, the shadows cast directly below. So it's important if you want some dramatic shadows to make sure that your light source does actually have enough distance away from the target to be able to throw those shadows. Now that shadow is very atmospheric. If I select the armor again, I can control the length of that shadow. I can make it extend all the way uh, outwards or I can decrease it and make it a lot tighter as well. It's entirely up to you from an aesthetics perspective which one you want to go with in terms of the... Um, in terms of the shadow length, whether it's a long shadow or a short shadow, is entirely up to you to decide. You don't have to apply shadows to all objects, for example. You can, of course, go through and apply shadows to all objects. This skeleton, however, seems to be casting too heavy a shadow. So whether we reduce it down, I'm not sure it looks good. I'm actually going to just take it off. The casket that the statue sits upon, let's select that now quickly. I've got the grave as uh, was the prop I used here. I select cast shadow. Now, once again, we're getting a strange effect where we're not seeing this shadow. Well, we are slightly down here in the bottom of the uh, grave itself. And that's because if I select the light source, it is taking the edge of the prop and using that as a shadow. So we have to make sure that our light sources are far enough away that once again they are casting that illumination. And there we can see some very interesting uh, shadow effects happening. This red light I would actually wager now is almost irrelevant uh, if I put it down here. But here it creates some very dramatic shadows. Now that's something to bear in mind if you are using the map presentation mode is that if your character tokens when we add a character to the scene, let's just add this uh, strange character here, a preloaded character that I created. Uh, we have the same option of creating a light source. This, of course, defaults to the standard seven foot, but we might want to decrease that down to, let's say, three feet or even two feet if we so desire. And if they're holding a light source, let's give them a light source. Now, that light source will automatically pick up any shadows that need to be cast I'm going to just make this red light go away. Notice that the light automatically starts casting shadows. What's really useful is as the figure moves around the statue, the shadow will move with it as well, creating a very atmospheric type of feeling. Now, as I move the token up towards this door, we will see that the door does not allow light through it, even though the door is clearly open. In order to allow the door to do this, we simply select the door itself, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the door options, and we'll notice that there's a new tab that says transparency. We're going to select that, and that will allow light to shine through the door so that our character tokens or the light sources that we've placed will reveal slight illumination into the next chamber. Of course, once they move through into that, the reverse is true as well, and the light will shine backwards. It is important to note that lights will only cast shadows if there is a wall that blocks their pathway. So, for example, if I move the token down here, we can see this hard shadow being formed because the light does not bend around the sides of walls. So walls create harsh shadows and then other shadows are created by props once you have enabled that prop to cast shadows. If we did not want the shadow of the knight on the grave for whatever particular reason, all that we do is we select the grave itself and then we change the light receiver type and we change that to flat, no prop shadows. What this does is it automatically removes any shadows cast by other props that would sit on top of it. So I'm gonna re-enable that so we can have a look and see. Let's say that it's flat. You can see there the shadow of the knight now falls over the grave. I deselect that, now it doesn't. It still does cast a shadow, as does the knight, but the knight's shadow no longer interacts with the prop. Finally, of course, we can change it to none if we really want it not to receive any light source information whatsoever. It will still cast a shadow, but now it won't be illuminated by light. You can play around with those various options to see which works best for your map. And that is how you set up light within Dungeon Fog.